Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. On today's lesson, we're going to take a look at correlative conjunctions. Yes, that's right. Either or, neither nor, both and, not only but also, etc. Let's get started. What is a conjunction? Well, a conjunction is a joiner, a word that connects parts of a sentence. There are three types of conjunctions, coordinating, subordinating, and correlative. So this is what we're going to talk about today, correlative conjunctions. Let's take a look at some of them. Either or. You either cook or clean the house. Underline, you will find the correlative conjunctions. Not only, but also. Not only is she beautiful, but she is intelligent also. Look at the placement of the pronoun and the verb. So we have the verb first, which is is, then we have the pronoun, she. Not only is she beautiful, but she is intelligent also also at the end in this case. The next one, neither nor. Neither the basketball team nor the football team is doing well. Here you may notice that is is the verb, so it's highlighted in yellow, and is the singular form, because we're describing or the basketball team or the football team, so is. Other correlative conjunctions. Both and. Both my cousin and my best friend like ice cream. Notice the verb like. It is highlighted in yellow. And it is using the plural form. Both my cousin and my best friend. So that means two people. So plural. So like. No likes. Whether or. So in this example, we have whether you stay or go is your decision. Is being the verb is in the third person singular. Why? Because it's describing your decision. Just as so. So the example here is just as many Canadians love hockey, so many Italians love soccer. So we have many Canadians love. Love is the verb, so is the plural form. And many Italians love, again, here is plural, so the verb stays in the plural form, so love. So there are many other correlative conjunctions, but these are the most important ones. They're used in pairs to join phrases or words that carry equal importance within a sentence. When using correlative conjunctions, you must ensure verbs agree so your sentences make sense. You make sure that pronouns agree and also be sure to keep parallel structure intact. So let's take a look at each point then. Verbs must agree. If you connect two subjects with a correlative conjunction, the second one must agree with the verb that follows. Let's take a look at this example. Every single evening, either the horned owl or the squabbling cats wake Samantha with their racket. So we have wake in the plural form because we are describing the squabbling cats. There refers to obviously the squabbling cats. Let's take a look at the same example with different word order. Every single evening, either the squabbling cats or the horned owl wakes Samantha with its racket. So here we have wakes. Why? Because we are describing the horned owl. So it's a singular verb form. And its is the pronoun that refers to the owl. That's right. Let's take a look at the second point. Pronouns must agree. When you connect two subjects with a correlative conjunction, the second one must agree with a pronoun that follows. Neither Joe nor his friends show their concern about what they ate at the restaurant that night. 
So we have the pronoun here is there. Why? Because we are describing his friends. Let's look at the same sentence with a different word order. Neither Joe's friends nor Joe show his concern about what they ate at the restaurant that night. So you can see the pronoun here is his, referring to Joe, right? So his concern, so Joe's concern. So pay attention to the pronoun. The third point, keep parallel structure intact. Be sure that you have equal grammatical units after both parts of the conjunction. You can have two main clauses like this. Not only did Joe grill a fish for Mary, but he also grilled for Tokyo her cat. Look at the order of the sentence in the first clause. We have did, so the auxiliary of the past tense. Then we have the subject and then we have a verb. So pay attention to this structure in the main clause, in the first main clause. Then we have, but he also grilled, and the, in this case we didn't use the auxiliary, we used the verb, plus the ed because we're talking about a regular verb, plus a prepositional phrase for Tokyo, her cat. That is one option, you can have another option if you choose to. Or you can have two nouns, like for example, Joel grilled a fish for not only Mary, but also Tokyo, her cat. So we have two nouns, Mary and Tokyo, her cat. If you don't like either of them, we can shorten the sentence with two prepositional phrases, like this, Joel grilled fish not only for Mary, but also for Tokyo, her cat. So we have for Mary as a prepositional phrase and for Tokyo. So now let's practice. I will give you five minutes to complete the sentences. Then we'll look at the key. Please pause the video. Now that you have your answers, let's take a look at the key. Number one. Could I come over at either three or four o'clock? Asked Jim. Number two. Alfred not only got up late this morning, but also missed the train. Number three. I really need a holiday, but neither in Spain nor France. Number four. I'm going to fish tomorrow, whether it rains or shines. Number five. I don't like him. He's both rude and selfish. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have some questions about correlative conjunctions, just type them under this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I suggest you do. If you liked the lesson, hit on the like button, please. And you may share the lesson if you liked it. Until next time, bye-bye.